Hey everyone. In this one, I'd like to show you a new fast way to make sky selections in Photoshop that I think a lot of people don't even know about yet. Back in October of 2020, Adobe released a bunch of updates to Photoshop like they do every year at that time. And one of those updates this time around was the sky replacement feature. Now, if you want to replace skies in your images, this tool makes it really easy. And a lot of people have already done tutorials on how it works. I generally don't replace skies in my images, so it's not that much use to me. Now, I don't have anything against replacing skies if that's what you want to do. But for me, perhaps the most important important part of photography, more important than the final image, is being out there and experiencing beautiful and rare lighting events. Taking photos in mediocre light and then dropping an epic sky in later robs me of the one thing I enjoy the most about photography. The anticipation, the boredom, the agony, but also sometimes the joy and the thrill of the actual experience. Now, while everyone was talking about the sky replacement feature, they seem to miss the addition of the less sexy sky selection feature, which is found under the select menu right here where it says sky. If you've ever done any of my courses, you know that creating a sky selection is part of my workflow on just about every image that features both sky and landscape. Sky selections enable me to have separate control over my sky adjustments and landscape adjustments if needed, which is almost always. Now in the past, I always created my sky selections by either using the quick select tool to select the sky and then refining the selection with the select and mask workspace. This makes a very precise hard edge sky selection. Or if I needed a more feathered sky selection for exposure blending, let's say, then I usually create a modified luminosity mask that's white in the sky black in the land, and then I let the luminosity part of the selection determine how the transition works. Both of these are still great options, but they take a fair amount of time and effort. The new Select Sky feature creates a sky selection with a single click. When you go to the Select menu and run the sky selection, it auto-generates a sky selection for you. You don't have any control over it, but I've found that in a lot of cases, it does a great job right out of the gate. The selection has a bit of feathering along the edge of the skyline, so it's closer to a luminosity generated sky mask. So if you need a completely hard edge selection, then the quick select tool and select and mask method is still the way to go. Once you've loaded the auto sky selection, you can still go into the select and mask space if you wanna refine it further. Like a lot of auto features, this doesn't get just the selection you want every time, but depending on the image and what adjustment you're trying to make, it works well quite often. So for me, this won't entirely replace the other methods of creating sky selections or sky masks, but rather it's just one more tool in the toolbox that I can use when I need a sky selection. It's so fast and easy that it makes sense to at least give it a try first, and then if it doesn't work, you can go to one of the other methods second. So let's try it out and I'll show you how it works. So on this image, let's say I want to make an adjustment to the sky first. So I need a sky selection. So like I said before, there's a lot of other ways that I can create a sky selection. But in this case, I'm just gonna go straight to select sky and see how it does. So there's that sky selection. And I'm gonna use this with a curves adjustment layer to create a adjustment that's just for the sky. So I'll go ahead with that selection active, create a curves adjustment layer, and there is that sky mask attached to the curves adjustment layer. Looks great. And now when I make my adjustment, for example, if I wanna darken my darks and lighten my lights in the sky to create more kind of a mood and more contrast and contour in that sky, and I'll really push it here for the video so you can really see what's going on. There it is. So that selection is doing a great job. Now let's say I also want to do a separate adjustment for the landscape. So in this case, I, what I want to do is I want to kind of bring out the shadows a little bit. I want to lift the shadows, but my highlights and the rocks are right up against, you know, kind of clipping already. So I don't want to lighten those. I just want to work with the shadows. So that's a good use for a luminosity mask. So I'm going to go ahead and load 
uh, luminosity mask here using the TK Go module. And I want a darks mask, maybe a darks two or a, let's see, a darks three even. I think that's really gonna protect those bright areas in the rock. So I'm gonna do this with a brightness contrast adjustment layer and use that with that mask. There's the uh, luminosity mask that's on that layer. And I can bring up the brightness and work with the contrast to get that adjustment looking how I want in the foreground. And I think that looks pretty good. It's protecting my highlights great. Here's what that adjustment would look like without the mask protecting the highlights. But what I don't like is that it's affecting my sky as well. I had the sky how I wanted it. So there's another place I can use select sky to load that selection of the sky. And then with that selection active, I'm just gonna fill that part of the mask with black. So go to fill, fill with black, say okay. And it's now done that, I can deselect. And let's view the mask. So now we have the luminosity mask down here, filled the sky selection with black so that adjustment's not affecting the sky at all. And now we're getting that great adjustment in the foreground without affecting my sky. So let's take a look at the before and after on the image. So with two quick adjustments using the sky selection tool, I was able to separate out my adjustments for the sky and the landscape and make good headway with just those two adjustments on getting this image uh, kind of balanced and set up the way that I want it to look. And that's all there is to the new Photoshop Select Sky feature. Next time you want to adjust the sky and land separately, just go to Select Sky and see how it works for you. So happy 2021. If you're watching this very far in the future, I hope things are starting to look up by now. And as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.